Let's see, is it recording? It is recording. Good morning, everybody. It's 6.32 a.m. on Wall Street. It's time to get your global macro on about three hours before the trading or maybe the collapse of the bond market. Wow, are these days uh, incredible. Uh, so anyways, let me re uh, let me get going here. We had a hot mic. I think we got it. Uh, so anyways, let's get going. Uh, this is our opportunity to uncover our best fundamental investment opportunities. We automate all this stuff that you should be doing manually back in the old days, you know, when we were making wheels out of stone. <laughs> well, now we automate things. Yes. Sentiment, inflation, employment, GDP, technical trends, open trade positions, and a lot more. See, all you have to do as a trader and an investor is do things like watch VIX, the S&P 500, bond yields, gold the U.S. dollar index, and a few other things in real time. And then do your comparative analysis and come out with a fundamental bias. That's it. You're like, actually, that's a lot. Yeah, just to get all that data is a lot of work. So QuantBox automates it. So anyway, so we have all these pretty colors, and they lead up to a fundamentally based bias. Should you be buying an asset? Should you be selling? Do you know the 20 year average? Do you know the five year average? Are you following the flow of capital that institutional investors are moving around? Is money going into gold or out of gold? You should know that. It's all quantitative data now easily accessible. So, anyways, if you're on YouTube, you're watching this video way late, like way, 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 hours and hours and hours late. Why don't you swing by Quantbox Stock Code, try the trial? It's eight bucks. Yeah, it does cost money, 79 bucks a month. That's not cheap, is it? Here's the thing. What value would you place on having confidence in your trading? What price would you place on knowing why an asset is moving? What price would you place on having enough confidence in your trade to let the winners run? Hopefully that value is more than 80 bucks. But anyways, at least get your thoughts organized, retail versus uh, institutional. Get your thoughts organized, bullish versus bearish versus neutral. Quantbox.co. All right, let me remind you that trading is risky. It's not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term. Never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Let me get some co coffee in me. <laughs> oh, just a heads up. This is going away pretty soon, I guess. What day is it? Is it, is it Wednesday yet? Yeah, I guess it's Wednesday, huh? So this will be going away pretty soon. I'm not sure if it's today or tomorrow. It's the last chance to get your fourth quarter outlook. And that reminds me, I haven't told anybody, but today, <laughs> so funny, I haven't told anybody. Today is the course on trading stocks. Somewhere this morning, I'm going to have to send an email so, so I don't do the presentation by myself. <laughs> which is kind of strange. But anyways, it's part of pushing forward, right? Just like a soldier, you keep moving forward. So I'm doing, <laughs> doing a stock trading lecture today at noon, uh, and that's over at Investor Bootcamp. But that is tied I did uh, to this because I did talk about it in there. So the only people that know about it attended this. Okay, so anyways, let's get going. You guys going to attend? I, I need to... I need, what am I going to send out an email? Anyways, I'm probably going to send out an email to let you know. But worst case scenario, if you've already signed up for the stock trading course and you enjoyed the hour and 45 minute lecture last week, I'll log into the same room. And I'll be there just before noon. Okay. Tenure T note, 4.8. We haven't seen that before. But you know what happened overnight? The 30-year hit five. Five. End of the world, isn't it? 
zombie apocalypse, cats living with dogs, Republicans and Democrats hugging, right? End of the world. Well, the last time we had a yield on the on the 30 year bond of 5% or more was 2007 before the global financial crisis and we started flooding the global markets with free money through quantitative easing. So, in a weird way, I almost celebrate that like, really? 5% 5 on the 30 years bad? Not if you're retired. There was a time when you actually got money in return for saving. So in the course, that stock trading course, one of the things we talked about is fi financial intermediaries. There was a time when you could just save your money, <laughs> like just put it in a bank account. Well, of course, now your banker just takes that and turns it into uh, a bond purchase and then pays you uh, interest, or you can put it in a money market, or you can put it in a CD. But it was it was normal to put money aside in something safe like a government treasury and earn earn a return higher than inflation. So now it's back. But I don't think it's the end of the world. It's a big change, but it's not the end of the world. So, hey kids, welcome back to reality. That free money that we've had for fifteen years, yeah, that's gone. <laughs> Hold that free money. Yeah, that's gone. Anyways, yields on the 10 year, uh, still not quite five, but getting there. But notice though, that we do have an inverted yield curve. Now, it's more of a J curve, uh, if you will, where short term interest rates, and I have nowhere to draw, but short term interest rates, like if we looked at this and the one, the two, the three, the, the 10, <laughs> 20, the 30. Okay, they're not quite to scale. Um, the short term is still really high, and then it comes like this, and then it goes. So the five, the 30 is higher than the 10, but the two is higher than the 10 as well. So that's got to change, and a, a yield curve should look more like that. So, you know, we're figuring things out. I think a, a big opportunity for us in the future is when the Fed is done, the whole world knows they're done, they're done, done, raising interest rates, um, and we inch closer and closer to a point in which like if they're done raising then then there'll be in a pause and then the next likely outcome is a cut somewhere out in the future well then the two year won't be a safe place anymore a one year and a two year note or bill right they're not really investment vehicles it's not like you just set it and forget it, like because th as quickly as those yields were there, they'll just quickly leave. And I think a lot of people think it's passive investing. So they'll just throw it in the money market and forget about it. Well, they'll come back and they'll be earning less than inflation. And that might happen really quickly. Because like, think of this, if you're earning 5% on a two year, but it's variable. At some point, you might want to walk lock it in for 10 years, especially if you believed in the future returns on the short end of the yield curve will go back to normal, which should be lower, right? A two should pay less than a five, five should pay less than a 10, 10 should pay less than a 20, 20 should pay less than a 30. You should have that curve, right? So at some point, I think then very quickly, people will go from a one year and a two year, lock it in into a 10 year. And now you get 5% a year for 10 years. And it won't be a variable anymore. It'll be locked in to maturity, right? So anyways, I think that'll happen. When, you know, well, that's that's our goal as traders and investors. Just understand that there's a lot of money there now. Doesn't mean it'll be there forever. And we're seeing things like now, a, a 30 year pays more than a five year and it pays more than inflation. Oh my God, that's good news in my humble opinion. That's good news. That's good news, that's normal, okay? All right, so anywho, let's uh, look at this uh, 88 bucks on oil. Okay, I think I had it coming down as low as 85. 
so we're well on our way, but we've been here uh, a couple of days. So there's some stability there. Gold coming down 1838. I think I had 1800 as the number. So that's, that's normal. And I've covered this before. It's seasonal. There's a time to harvest your gold and that's occurred. S&P 500 down. Okay. End of the world, everybody. End of the world. Oh, well, maybe not. So we'll take a look at that in a second. Euro dollar. Yeah. Well, dollar strong with all this stuff going on. I mean, uh, not only are yields just cra uh, crazy in the United States, they're crazy in Japan. Okay. Lots of stuff going on. And then Bitcoin, nothing. All right. Well, it could be worse. Do we have any changes going on here? Yeah, well, you know what? So yesterday, just uh, in case you've been playing video games all, all, all night, um, Kevin, McCar is Kevin McCarthy, Kevin <laughs> McCarthy, I always say McConnell, McCarthy lost his job. All right, so Speaker of the House, what, what does that even mean? Uh, I, so I think the way that it, the order is there's the president of the United States, there's the vice president. Is it Speaker of the House third? It's third, isn't it? Third in line? Wait, the Senate? Is he not the House? He's the Senate guy? Sorry. Anyways. It's a big, high-up leadership position. How about that? <laughs> okay, a big, high-up leadership. He's House, but the Senate is third, I see. The Senate is next. Uh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. It does, actually, yeah, yeah. Um, so then what is it, fourth? <laughs> All of a sudden, you're like, wait, you're totally wrong, it's 17th. All right. Well, okay. But, you know, top 20 is good, right? Anyways, this is a very big leadership position. Jim says fourth. Yeah. Okay. So you're the most, you're the fourth most powerful person in the United States. All right. So he was fired. Okay. What's well, a big deal, right? How many times has it happened before? Never. So that's must be a big deal. So how about this? Do, will it matter? Well, these guys, like a role like this, their job is to run around and make sure things are happening, that people are talking, that there's backdoor channels for people that can't talk directly. But you know politics. They never talk to your face anyways, right? So it's all about these backdoor channels um, where you say one thing and then you do something else, right? Um, and you try to get deals done. This they're deal makers, they're hustlers, they you know, they they they're the grease for the machine. And you know, every year is more, more and more complicated as uh politics becomes more and more polarized. Okay, great. That person is gone now. Now they can't. Now the, the this sort of backdoor communication and stuff, well, the deal maker's gone. That's going to be a problem. So why did he get fired? Do you remember that whole government shutdown thing they were going to shut down last week? He made sure the government didn't shut down. So now he's fired. Okay? Maybe, right? That's pretty much it. I don't know the politics behind it. Obviously... He did he he did something to keep the door open, which means he's made deals, and then the people that don't want the deals are now upset. And so everyone's upset. So they got a deal done and now everybody hated him. The Democrats and the Republicans. They're like, whatever, but he kept the government open and he thought that was the right thing to do. Uh, but now it's cost him his job. So now guess what? We're gonna run into the same problem because that that only fixed things for 45 days. And now there's nobody to fix things. What's the likely outcome? Well, they have to like, 
put a new person in place, but guess what? They're not working this week anyways. It's a vacation week. It's a work from home week, uh -huh, which means they're, they're home doing laundry and not working. Okay, so that ain't going to be fixed. So then they'll come back, they'll throw somebody in there. Is there time to like fix the government spending thing with the new person? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. So the the likelihood of a government shutdown has increased exponentially. So let's get back to trading and investing. Is that good? Is that good? Is that like risk on? Oh, thank God we have a dysfunctional government. No. Okay. And it's just not good. So remember, uh, nominal GDP is equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending. Okay. So a, a component of GDP is out of control. So anyways, uh, we got more risk off today. Yesterday it was zero. Today it's three. So welcome back, risk off. Boo. Not good. Okay. Swissy got strong on us overnight. Everything up here is unwanted. Okay. All of this, no good. Lots of things, no good. Okay. A lot of volatility in the ends over the last 24 hours. Dropped hundreds and hundreds of pips and then rallied back half of that. I think that's kind of where we are now. Uh, so these look up, but they, for a while, were horribly bearish and now back up. So could be worse. Lots of volatility. Japanese stock market. Negative 2.28 today. Yeah, that ain't good. So we can get rid of that and try to normalize this distribution. Okay. Now, one of my challenges today, and I, I, I hope I have the capacity to do it, is you know how I do something like this? And I'm like, there's the mean, and then we do y equals mx plus b, and then we, you know, calculate the variance, and then we square the variance to get the standard deviation. Okay, this is for calculating a distribution here. Uh, I'm going to try to do, use the same process, if you will, to analyze risk and return. The, okay, the the distribution of risk versus return between two or three different stocks in two or three different scenarios so that you pick the right stock to buy. Because an $8 stock versus a $12 stock is irrelevant, right? That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so you got to, there's other things that you can start looking at. And I, I, I want you to start thinking about this math. I'm going to use this kind of math to try to help decide what's the best stock to invest in. It's going to be a good course. Um, yeah, it's complicated, though. <laughs> it's hard because it's mathy. There's a lot of mathy stuff I'm trying to get across. But anyways, I get all excited because as soon as I see this, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's the mean. There's the average. That's the expected return. Uh, anyways, um, that's negative right now. You can see this is a negative outcome. The slope is down. That's bad. So the, the, right now, you can look at this and say, Ugh, the market is risk off. Anywho, holy smokes. Guess we can quickly look at this. Yeah, yields are just crazy. Again, up 6% for the week.
Yeah, uh, I, I guess I should zoom in a little more. The biggest losers, Japanese stock market, American stock market. Look at 33,000. Hmm. Maybe let it drop to 30,000 and buy it, huh? British stock market. S&P 500. Yeah. Cool. Well, in the long run, hopefully it's higher than 4,000, right? Yeah. I'm so proud right now as a parent. My son, who's under the age of 18, opened his Roth IRA yesterday. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm trying to explain to him. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. I'll put you in my book. It's like I said, ask anyone of retirement age, anyone, find anyone with gray hair and tell them you just opened your retirement account. They're like, oh, my God, I wish I had done that. Every single person will tell you. So anyways, yeah, so he'll be investing in that money very, very shortly. Maybe it'll be the S&P 500. Okay, dude. It's weird because I'm showing them all the compounding calculators. I'm like, yeah, compound it for 50 years. Like they don't even have an option. If there's a drop down, there's no option for like you're a teenager and you're going to hold it till you're 67 or something, right? And you're like, there isn't even a 50 year option. I'm like 50 years of compounding. And of course, with my style of investing, it's compounding 1% a month, not even including what the stock market's doing. It's so outrageous. It's so unbelievably outrageous. But anyways, S&P 500, all these things are these broad indices that at some point uh, people want to invest in. NASDAQ flat. Yeah. Hard to believe, actually. Okay. The, the thing with averages, though, that's the average over the last seven days. It's flat, but I love the example of, you know, you got one foot in boiling water and one foot in ice water. On average, it's okay. Uh, but you're probably uncomfortable. Yeah, and that's called volatility. Okay. So, anywho, um, yeah, let's go to the charts. We have ADP at nine, uh, 8.15 today. Don't forget that. All right. So here's what I want to bring up. And I actually did it off camera, so I already uh, spoiled it. Where'd it go, Wayne? Spoiled it. I ruined it. We were talking about this before the recording. All right. Oops. Okay. So we're looking at the market here, and I'm measuring from a bottom. Uh, how far down? This move. Uh, you can't even see that. There we go. Okay, this is the move I'm measuring. You can measure kind of from like these real bodies or from the wick. It's subjective, whatever you want. So I'll put it down here to the lowest low of the recent low. So, right? Stock market had dropped down to 3,500 basically, right? Okay. So based on that move, it feels like we've run into a very bad period where in okay in july the stock market fell by the way it's supposed to okay august it came down again now sometimes in the third week of august it rallies sometimes but we're very prepared for it to to fall all the way down into the third week of September. I know we're past that, but now you're ready, willing, and able. We don't know what day, but you're still in that mode. If you're a bull or a very, very long-term investor, you're waiting to buy a dip in, in this asset, which is the broad stock market. Very large companies and medium-sized companies. You're, you're buying basically... Every company in every industry in the United States. Good. It is it is the definition <clears throat> of both diversification and the beta. 
So there's no additional risk. You're not, uh, not too much risk, not enough risk. It's just, it is the market. Okay, cool. So you might have a decision on a long-term, as a long-term investor that you want to buy a dip. Cool. So if you remove yourself from the fall of the last three or four months, now, if you're in for 20 years, you don't care about three or four months. Okay. Then you would look at this more objectively and, and say, okay, the last few months, yeah, down, understood. We're in this weird transitionary period post-COVID. Yeah. A lot of it is not unexpected. It actually makes a lot of sense. And then we look at it and find out all we did was pull back to the previous level of resistance, which is support, which now if you're a technician, you use technical analysis to trade, even if you trade a five minute chart, you would look at this and say, well, that's just the first level of support. Like that's almost a healthy and wanted retracement. Now, is that the buying opportunity? I don't know, and probably not. Maybe it wants to come down a little bit lower and up. So quite some time ago, you know, weeks ago, we identified uh, my first buying opportunity was somewhere between, uh, was it 42 and 41? And then the next one is 4,000, which is down here, which is the 50% retracement. So it could still come down and then work its way up. Okay. So if it feels terrible, show yourself that, okay, it's a small retracement. Now, yeah, the, 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 I think the scariest part of all of this is, is the fact that it's a lower high. So what did I do back in July and August? I essentially took risk out of the... So I wasn't in just the S&P 500. Uh, there's also NASDAQ. There's also Dow. There's some, I was in treasuries and all that kind of stuff. So I bailed on treasuries because I thought yields would spike. <laughs> I didn't know they were going to spike like that. Like, oh, my gosh. But I got out. And I, oh, thank God. Thank God I did. Um, so now, anyways, we're in this pullback. And I do believe in the long term. So uh, if you're unhappy, it's because you, you didn't hedge expected risk that was involved just with seasonality. See, with seasonality, you would expect at least something like this. Totally. I mean, that's the whole point, right? So we have something like that. Will it go back up? Maybe. Probably. When? Well, that's what we don't know. And looking at it from a, a higher time frame, we're just in that first little dipsy area. There's the 3A2, there's the 50%, there's the 618. Okay. Okay, is the big question mark. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So hopefully it's not the end of the world. Hopefully it's not a zombie apocalypse. We have real challenges, of course, but hopefully uh, it's not terrible. All right. All right. So uh, there we go. Gold stabilizing now above... Okay, now above the predicted EMA, interesting. That hasn't happened very often. Okay, we're still below the daily pivot on gold. Okay, let me clean that up. Maybe we'll do the hourly. So definitely a hesitation going on here. Okay. And then we back out. It's the price we put on the chart a month ago. And now we're hesitating. Doesn't mean it's over, but we we certainly had good analysis to point that out. That that price would be important. And it has been. And now 
we've consolidated for a day and a half. No, a day and a half. <laughs> a day and a half of consolidation. Um, but it is above that predictive line now, which is kind of interesting. And that that is a bottom. Be interesting if it goes all the way back to 19. Be very interesting. My oh my WTI continuing to come back down. We have the lowest low possibly at 81.50, maybe even 80. But the next likely level of support is 84. Five, which is that role reversal and the confluence with the 55. Boop, boop, boop. All right. Okay. So what do we see here? So the thought process is it works its way down and then there would be interesting we're not predicting we're not predicting this move how, how will i mark it we're not predicting this move we're saying if you get a move like that then you want to look left here okay and if that happens then you're you're trying to anticipate that so you, you probably don't buy, let's do this in green. You probably don't buy the, uh, the, the circle X, okay? You do the circle Z, <laughs> okay? So anyways, uh, so the next level of support, maybe 85. It could go all the way back as low as 80. Now I've looked at, Right, I've looked at oil, and I don't think we have enough. But this, this probably, and I, I posed this question several days ago. You know, is this pullback um, based on the U.S. economy is going to crash? It's imminent. It's started. Okay, the iceberg is behind us. And the front of the boat <laughs> is in the water. <laughs> you're like, we've already hit it, right? This is where you're like, hey, maybe we should get in the lifeboat. Nah, have another cocktail. Um, yeah, maybe we've already hit the iceberg, right? Uh, so if that's the case, uh, uh, don't worry about driving your, your F-150 to work because uh, <clears throat> you're fired. How come you're fired? Well, nobody's buying our stuff is what your boss says so they lay you off okay so now you don't have to go to work so all that kind of stuff that could be the narrative or uh, uh it's just or it's just a pivot okay so anyways uh i i got my eyeball here now if you are trading like the the pure pivot strategy would be like that this m2 is very important so your line in the sand might be 87 ish 87 and a half eight right um but i kind of like to combine a little bit so price action with pivot points you know you you're just predicting some sort of move like that you're not quite sure is it going to be a 3a2 of 50 percent of 618 like now, but now we're splitting hairs. It doesn't matter. In that case, well, I think what matters is you're buying a dip. That's what matters. So this is, okay, if you're going to use Fibonacci, you would just say somewhere between the 382 and 618. And it's that purple zone. Okay. And I hope you appreciate my shirt matches these charts. Hmm? Uh -huh. You like that? The blue and the the purple and the green, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, so if we're looking at that, let me get rid of it. No, this thing, get rid of that thing. Okay, that is the whole buy zone for right now. So, will we head all the way down? Ah, I didn't want to get rid of that. Uh, maybe, 
We don't know that, of course. But what you should be prepared for, if in particular if you're a bull, is that we have entered a buy zone. But it's been falling for days. Uh-huh. If you're a bull, you buy dips. If you're a bear, you sell rips. Okay. Oh, Denise, I see your comment there. I wake up in the morning and I want to sell the yens. There's the there's a difference, <laughs> right? Small difference, but a huge difference. So, uh, look, maybe things have changed. Maybe they haven't. That that's the trick, right? That that uh, that we have, um, because we always have to stay informed, right? We always have to stay informed. Uh, we don't want to do it too blindly, but somewhat blindly. So, like, if you had that attitude a year and a half, two years ago, when the Bank of Japan started yield curve control, I know I did special training on it probably 18 months ago or something. Uh, but let's say that could be the basis of your, your trading strategy going back a couple of years. See, what I think most amateur traders do is they log in, they look for a trade. You'll always find something to do, but it'll be terribly, terribly, terribly inconsistent. <clears throat> so with a fundamentally based strategy, okay, you don't necessarily know, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't necessarily know exactly when you're going to place a trade, but you know exactly what you intend to do. You don't look for trades, you wait for opportunities. There's a big difference there, right? And the idea is that we have a fundamentally based trend so that it, it can last years. So you might doing, based on Japanese yen yield curve control by the Bank of Japan, for the last two or three years, you wake up in the morning, you open up your yen pairs and say, is this an opportunity to buy a dip? And you don't even really care about which yen pair because your prime part of your strategy is because of Bank of Japan's yield curve control, you sell the Japanese yen, which means you buy a yen pair. So then you spend in the you, you wake up in the morning, you open up your yen charts, and you say, is this a dip? Is this a dip? Is it at support? Has it reversed? Is it reversing? Should I trade? And the idea is you buy dips and, and let that one go. And then the next day, you might have a different relative strength in some other thing. But you're very, very, very consistent. So at the end of a year, you might have a 1,000 trades. And they're all long yen pairs, which means you're consistently, on a daily basis, looking for opportunities to buy dips in the yen pairs. Could be Aussie. Could be pound, could be kiwi, could be cad, could be dollar, could be swissy, but they're all yens. And so an institutional investor would then look and say, "Wow, Denise, you're you're selling yen." Yeah, because of the yield curve control policy at the Bank of Japan, they want the yen to weaken, and I'm helping them. And they're like, "Oh, that makes sense." Okay. Uh, but with fundamental trend traders, like now we have to use technical analysis to tell us when, not why. Okay, so maybe we'll look at a yen pair. Let's do a yen pair. Let's yen pairs. Let's do pick a yen, any yen, right? Uh, yeah, so we had a lot of volatility over the last bit. Should we do a pound? That sounds horrible. Um, uh, well, I guess we can. Uh, and then we go farther back. This is a terrible one just because, well, the UK has been in trouble for a while. So should we pick a different one? <laughs> Which one looks good? Maybe Aussie. Okay, let's do Aussie. Let me clean this up. By the way, look at that volatility, huh? Holy smokes. Okay. So we haven't looked at this for a while. 
But notice that we have the higher high, okay? A higher low, okay? If you're using Fibonacci, okay? This is the predicted top. And then boom! Look at that, huh? Huge day yesterday, just in, insane. Okay, let's let's get out of that though. Uh, let's just clean this up. Let's put this on a very basic um, scenario, maybe uh, yearly pivot points. That's pretty clean. Okay, and we look at this daily. Okay. Yeah. So every day. Post-COVID drop. Okay, there's the low, March 2020. By the way, that's seasonally when these things go up. But anyways, um, let's take a look at that. Oops. A macroeconomic trend trader, like you were saying, wake up in the morning, look for opportunities to maybe buy a dip. Okay. Okay. We can dumb it down and just say that could have been your trend for the last three years. Now, they're not all good opportunities. Now, there's seasonality with the yen as well. So you got to incorporate a couple of different layers to the onion. But nonetheless, um, you know, fundamental trends last a long time. So we're trying to figure out, is this going to go this way? Okay. Possible BOJ intervention. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So we had a couple of bad days. Is it meaningful? It could be. And this is why you have quant box. So you look at the seasonality of yen pairs. And you say, well, is this the time of year I should be buying a yen pair and assuming a higher high? Okay, that gives you conviction. And then now you wait and do your technical analysis. So let me zoom in. Okay, at what point will you feel comfortable buying a dip? That's, that's how you use technical analysis now. If you've done seasonality, and if you've done fundamentals, you would have made a decision now. Let's say, buy any yen pair, okay? So now you're analyzing Aussie yen today. Are, you know, are we at support, maybe? Yeah. And then when you're at support, maybe you could even drop into a smaller time frame and say, somewhere around this price, somewhere around this price, you're looking for bullish trading patterns. And it might be Aussie yen, but it could be CAD yen, it could be pound, it could be, okay, that's all relative strength. Each individual day, you don't know which yen is going to go up the most, but that's not the, that's not what you're trying to guess right? You know, over a period of time, all assets with a yen on the right side of it will go up. So any given day might offer an opportunity. And many days will not. Either nothing is moving up or they're all moving down. But you're not trying to figure out what you want to, what you're doing. You're not looking at the charts for answers of what to do. Your charts only identify at what price and what time. Okay. And then, and going back to this longer term chart, there are plenty of times when it's not a good opportunity at all. It's a horrible opportunity, but you're trying to stay with the fundamental trends. I would say generally it's been up. Trying to get this in. There we go. I would say, so these are weekly candles now, huh? Okay. 
we had that big move yesterday. What caused it? <clears throat> End of the world kind of stuff. Let me show you on a different chart, maybe. I will need this one. Let's, uh, I'm going to put a line down here and then I'm going to open it up and let's put a random psychological number that is completely meaningless except for stupid humans. Not meaning it was meaningful to some people who are stupid. No, all humans are stupid. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, what? <clears throat> yeah, for some reason. So I just put down uh, 150. Okay, yeah. So for some reason, all the fundamentals haven't mattered to people. These crazy deficits and negative GDP and, you know, all this stuff. And then we hit. 150 and now everything's changed <laughs> okay and some people were talking yesterday um about that this move was japan i don't look at it that way i think this was the market we hit 150 and everybody was out and this was Japan. <laughs> right? Jim's like, and it's been that, our target for quite some time. It's been everybody's target for quite some time, right? But is it meaningful? Well, maybe it creates meaning at some point. Um, and I've seen over my years some very dramatic moves based on just psychological level uh you know and you're like that dropped over 200 pips uh i remember just on slippage losing more than 200 pips in a couple of minutes which means say that again in english i've seen the yen drop a thousand pips in 10 minutes with me on it by the way making money but then there's no market when you try to take profit right so anyway so it dropped a thousand pips and then rallied 700 pips and then dropped 300 pips all in that 10 minutes and so you're like that's a big day there's no doubt but son let me tell you some horror stories <laughs> right like that's where you gotta right the the old trader the the old worn out traders that put their arm around the new traders like let me tell you the war stories right like that's a big day but oh my god i've had five minute candles bigger than that right so it's a big day but it's not a disastrous day and again the way i read this is it's purely psychological the market took profit and then it dropped hundreds of pips which then the Bank of Japan intervened and pushed it back because of, wait for it, yield curve control. So anyways, what do we do now? Nothing, you're right in the middle. Bears, um, right? So bulls took profit and bulls bought it back. Yeah, cool. But probably not described that way in whatever media you watch or whatever YouTube guru you pay attention to. Um, probably you hear the opposite. And then you're like, wait, I don't think you understand the Bank of Japan. But anyways, so uh, interesting. Okay, so I got to go because we got ADP. Okay, we got ADP today. I keep forgetting. It is Wednesday, right? I never know what day it is. It is Wednesday. My phone says it's Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. All right. Sorry, I have like four hours sleep. <laughs> it is Wednesday. Good. Um, so ADP is going to come out at 8.15, and that can be volatility. And everybody's sensitive. What's NFP and what's the Fed going to do and all that kind of stuff. So uh, lots going on. Busy week. So I'll let you to it. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. I'll see you later. I'm sure. Cheers.